my name is Austin Leibel. I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works. We do training on Azure, Azure Synapse Analytics, Data Factory. Today, we are going to be looking at how we can hopefully save you some time, save you some money, or potentially both when doing ETL from an Azure SQL database. When you do ETL with an Azure SQL database, you have a database that has a certain size. So uh, I have currently a basic tier database that has five DTUs, that's database transaction units allocated to it. That is just a measure of the compute size of my database as it stands right now. But I can scale that database up and scale it down as needed. So if I want, I can scale that database up run an ETL process, and then once I'm done with that ETL, scale it back down, and I'm only going to be billed for the time that it was scaled up at that certain higher level. Let's head over to our Azure SQL database and Data Factory and see how we can do this. Let's head over now. So inside of my Azure SQL database, I have two different stored procedures. One is going to be scaling my database up, you can see I am going to create a procedure and I'm going to alter my AdventureWorks LT database from my current basic tier to my standard tier with my service object tier at S3. Now, the other option I want to make sure I have is the ability to scale that database back down when I am done with my ETL. So I'm going to again scale that database back down with another stored procedure alter the same database and modify it back to that basic level of service. This is an online operation, so this can happen without having to shut the database down or anything like that. So I can go ahead, run my ETL, and when I'm done with that, go ahead and shut that back down. Now, the other thing I do want to show you is that I can go through and I can look at my current compute tier of my SQL database. So I'm going to open this up right here. I'm going to include those different class files, those different files for the YouTube video today in our notes. So if you want to simulate this in your own environment, feel free. Currently though, I am selecting my database properties and going to see my current service tier and compute size. When I run this right here, this SQL database is a basic service tier, a basic compute size. So let's head over, head over now to Data Factory and see how we can do this. So I have already built out a pipeline in order to run my ETL process and to scale this database up and wait until it hits a certain tier, that S3 tier of my Azure SQL database that I want it to hit before I actually run my ETL process. So how I'm doing this, I brought in a stored procedure activity inside of my pipeline, and I need to point to a linked service that is connected to that Azure SQL database. Now I have my Azure SQL AdventureWorks database linked service, and then I also need to select the stored procedure that I want to bring in to uh, scale this database up. So that's going to be the one I created to scale DB up right here. There we go. Let's go ahead and select that. So that is configured correctly to go ahead and scale that up. But again, I want to make sure that before I actually run my ETL process that that database has been scaled up. Now you don't necessarily have to. You could, again, this is an online operation, so you could go ahead and run that if you like. But I like having all my ducks in a row, so before I actually run the ETL, I'm going to bring in an until activity that is going to wait until I get to a certain point in my Azure SQL database, and then go ahead and run that ETL process. Now, how an until loop works is I am going to bring in some activities embedded in this until loop and they are going to be doing a lookup from my Azure SQL database to get an output to be able to tell me and tell my pipeline when that Azure SQL database hits the service tier S3. So let's go ahead and look at my configuration inside of my until loop first. So inside of my until loop, I have a lookup activity. Now in my lookup activity, I'm going to go into the settings 
And I am pointing to, again, my Azure SQL database. Now, this is a data set, not a linked service, but I am pointing to my Azure SQL database again. And I'm going to be running a query against my Azure SQL database to go ahead and select the compute size from that. So this is going to give me an output in my pipeline that's going to allow me to use that in my until loop expression I create to be able to wait until that is an S3 tier. I also have a wait activity inside of this to just be able to not have this run every few seconds to wait about every 15 seconds. That is totally optional though, you do not have to have that. So let's go back and look at that until loop expression inside of our pipeline. So in my until loop, I have my activities that are embedded in my until loop. And what again I'm looking for is an output inside of my expression. So let me open my expression builder here and let me bring this right here so it's a little bit easier to read. So what I'm going to be doing with this expression, I'm going to be using an equals function. This is going to check whether both values, expressions, or objects are equivalent. So I'm going to be referencing that lookup activity, this lookup compute size, and getting the output of the first row of that and I'm going to be looking for the compute size. And this is going to wait until this hits that S3 tier to be able to go ahead and run the rest of my ETL process. So again, I will include this expression in a text file in the YouTube files for y'all. All right, well, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to run this in debug because I do want to go ahead and show you those different express, those different outputs uh, that we're looking for to be able to see when I hit an S3 tier or if I'm still on a basic tier. So I'm going to go ahead and click debug and run this process. Now this will take just a few minutes. So if you uh, are uh, waiting in the background to do this, it typically takes about a minute or so per gigabyte of data that is on your SQL database. So I do not have a lot of data that is on this Azure SQL database. So this will not take me very long at all. Uh, you can see my pipeline is running there. I can go and look up an, a lookup activity in just a moment to see that basic service tier if it's the S3 service tier. Uh, I do want to make sure to mention that if you're interested in learning some more tips and tricks like this, you should check out our on-demand learning platform, our introduction to Azure SQL database, or potentially join us in one of our Azure Data Factory or Azure Synapse Analytics boot camps, where we can walk you through how to do this. And again, other awesome tips and tricks to be able to help you save money and time when working inside of Azure and specifically pipelines. Let's head over there and look at some of those out puts now. All right, so the output I have here inside of my pipeline currently, again, is a basic. So where I'm, again, pulling that first row compute size is the JSON output, the JavaScript object notation. So again, why I had the dot first row dot compute size in my expression is this right here. It's looking at that first row, looking at the first row of compute size, and it's going to wait till this hits that S3 tier to go ahead and run the rest of my ET. So currently it is returning as that basic as well. Let's see, it's also basic here. Now, if I want to, I can go see my database inside of my Azure portal to be able to see if my database is at the current level as well and see that it's scaling up. But it looks like that I, while I was looking for the database, it went ahead and scaled up. So let's head back over to our data factory now and see if that is true. Awesome. So we were able to go ahead and have that scale up and let's go and look at our compute size output now. Perfect. So now that that compute size is S3, it's recognized that that is uh, completed. So we can go ahead and from here we would run our Azure SQL database uh, ETL process, right? Uh, I, I do want to show you that inside of the portal, we can go back over here though and also see uh, underneath compute and storage in our settings that this is configured now to have 100 DTUs, which is that S3 tier. 
and uh, we have that ready for us. So let's also go back to our Azure SQL database and we can run that and see that it looks like we are already at that standard S3 tier. Awesome. So from here, we would want to, you know, run our ETL process and then ultimately scale that database back down. Now I created another clone of this pipeline, but also included this time the stored procedure to go ahead and scale this database back down. So let's point to that stored procedure we have to scale that down. Let's run this in debug now. Oops, and we do need to set this up as well. So we need to come over here and select the scale database up. Now this time when this runs, it's going to run the SQL of that stored procedure, but because the database is already scaled up, this until loop should recognize that on the first run and it should only wait one time for that 15 second interval we have inside of the until loop and then ultimately we'll come and run this stored procedure to scale the database back down. So we're running this, we're looking up the compute size. Of course, this is still that S3 tier. So now we're just waiting that 15 seconds inside that other activity in the until loop until we can go ahead and have that scale database down. So now that completed. Now this database is not currently scaled down yet. If we come back over to our Azure portal, we can see that this is what I was looking for earlier. The scaling is in progress. So we can come over here and look at the ongoing operation from scaling that S3 to the basic database level. So now we are going to scale that back down. That should complete. Potentially you could add some kind of logic inside of your pipeline to give you a confirmation that that scaled back down. So especially if you're moving this up to a very high tier to be able to perform this SQL, uh, to perform your ETL very quickly, you'd want to make sure that it did in fact scale back down. So that is awesome. So hopefully this was a big help to you. Let's go and talk about it uh, and we'll finish up here. So today we looked at you know how to scale up a database using stored procedures and using a pipeline to do so. Now there's a lot of different ways you can run this same process. You could potentially have a lot of your until loop logic inside of the stored procedure. You could potentially use a web activity as well in order to scale up a database and then scale it down. But wanted to show you maybe one of the easier ways, especially if you're just getting started with Data Factory on how you can run this from a pipeline using just some basic stored procedures to do this. So again, if you're interested in learning more tips and tricks on how to perform uh, optimally inside of Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse Analytics, definitely check out Pragmatic Works. We'll have some more YouTube content on that. Also, our boot camps are a great way to get that live experience. Or if you're more into running through uh, some in, in uh, videos on your own, you can go through and uh, check out our on-demand learning platform where you can watch us as quickly or slowly rewind us if you please and watch this over and over again. I will include, of course, those notes in how to do this, some of my different store procedures, my expressions uh, in the uh, files today. So definitely check that out if you want to follow us along with that. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed today and looking forward to saving some money and saving some time now with auto scaling your database. And I will hopefully see you in the next one.